Suppose we have this set of readings from a lab experiment. They consist of the resistance of an electric component at different temperature values. Since it's known that the resistance is linearly proportional to temperature, we can draw a straight line that represents that relationship. However, we note that not all of the points, if any, lie on a straight path. Each point has an amount of deviation from the line. So we try to make the line take a balanced path considering these deviations of the points above and below the line. This is a common practice in lab courses and can be made manually on graph paper. And it is used to find important properties from the slope of the line and its x or y intercepts. Instead of drawing the line manually, we will make a code of a curve fitting method called linear approximation or linear regression based on the least squares method. And the result will be the equation of the most representative straight line regarding the given points. Eventually, we will make a plot showing the points with the resulting line. Before that, let's make our problem more general and instead of temperature and resistance, let's use x and y. So at any point in our experimental data, we have xi on the x-axis and the corresponding yi on the y-axis. And our goal now is to find the equation of this straight line. This is the equation of a linear function with two unknowns, a, the slope of the line, and b, the y-intercept, or in other words, the value of yi when xi is equal to zero. Yi is the value corresponding to xi and satisfies the straight line equation. And on this example graph, it is the point at the intersection with the straight line at xi. Consequently, we have two values corresponding to xi. The experimental value y capital and the theoretical value y small. And let's call the amount of deviation in the vertical direction at xi the error ei. So EI is the difference between Y capital and Y small. To apply the least squares method, we need the sum of the squares of error at each point. And we use the squares so we take the magnitude of error regardless of being above or below the line. In other words, we neglect the effect of the negative signs of errors. Or by using the summation notation, we get this expression. By substituting the equation above, we get the summation in terms of the given data and the straight line properties A and B. It's important to note here that in the coming steps, we will deal with A and B as variables, not constants, because they are the unknowns of this particular problem. So keep this in mind to the end of derivations. Least squares method is based on making total magnitudes of errors minimum. And we can find the minimum by having the first derivative of s with respect to each variable equal to zero. So we get these two equations. You can pause the video here and check the derivation. Just a reminder, in partial derivative, all other variables in the equations are considered as constants. Now by dividing by minus two and expanding the summation over the terms, we get this final set of equations. And as you see here, this is a system of two equations with two unknowns, A and B. After finding all summations, this system can be easily solved manually. However, since our goal is to write the code of solution and plot, we will use a linear system solver. So we can write the two by two system in terms of constant coefficients t and absolute terms c, or we can put the system in this matrix form. Now we have a straightforward solution method and its coding will be as simple and direct. We start our code by importing the required packages for solution and plotting. Then we create the x and y capital arrays for the given data points. Here I'm using the data from our temperature versus resistance example. Also, I'm using the same variable names we've had in the derivation part. Since we need the number of data points in the calculation, we can get n from the size of x or y. Let's create the two by two system. You may have noticed here that I'm using the NumPy versions of sun and power functions, although they exist in Python. This is because the NumPy functions usually run accurately and faster when used with NumPy arrays. 
For example, the Python power function does not work on lists or arrays, while the NumPy power function returns a new array of each element raised to the given power. Here's an important practice of the inline for loop in Python. To find the sum of x multiplied by y, we need to use the zip function of an inline for loop. So we pick the corresponding elements from each array, multiply them, and then set the product in a list inside the sum function. Now we have all coefficients defined directly in the two-dimensional array t and all constant values in a one-dimensional array c. To solve the system, we use solve function from linear algebra module of NumPy. Since we expect only two values, we assign the return value from the solve function to a tuple of a and b, and the result is displayed through a formatted print. The final step is to check the results by plotting the given points and the straight line by using matplotlib tools. To plot the straight line, we define the equation as a lambda function. The plot will contain the points from the experiment as red round dots and the blue straight line. Finally, we add the labels of x and y axes and the grid lines. Now, let's run the code and see the results.